to really go back and reconcile with Jefferson late in life after yes. they had been political enemies and he, good he, friends for good friends time. man Shit. so he is really good on broad principles and on, on seeing the right pieces he just didn't put them together real well so he's a bad policy. executive he's a bad executive yeah and, and, and I would go further too is in, in doing the research some of the context that comes out is every president oversaw a war to some extent so it, Part of why Jefferson and, and Adams have a falling out of the administration is because these were the friends who got to work. And right now, the Washington administration is, is Team France. And Adams was like, no, no, we're, we're Team England. And so they have a falling out because obviously, I think it's a argument. We don't become a nation if France isn't our ally. If their Navy doesn't come, we don't win the American Revolution. But we've now been reconciled to England for 20 years, and, and they're our number one trade partner and all these things. So they have this falling out where. Just say, this is the time when Jefferson and Thomas Paine go to Washington yeah, about the end of his term, right? Yes. Okay, we got to pull it It's the middle second term. Yeah. yeah. And so, Jefferson, so Adams was on Washington's side. That kind of I don't understand. This is a different Adam, problem. All the Federalists, man, the Federalists were hardcore pro Great Britain. I mean, when when the War of 1812 breaks out later, they wow. opposed the War of 1812 because it's against Great Britain. But wait, Great Britain's taking your ships, they're impressing your guys, they're blowing down the water. But they're so loyal to Great Britain at all costs. We'll, we'll stand with Great Britain. And that's where Adams was. He was, uh, he was overly loyal to Great Britain oh, at a time when Great Britain was attacking us and taking our sailors. Well, and, and to go further, it wasn't just Great Britain that was attacking us and taking sailors. France yeah. sent some of their naval vessels. And they were impressing the Americans. It, they right were attacking American ships. So even part of what leads yeah, Adams to do this Alien and Sedition Act is that Fra France is actually sending people to America to recruit Americans to join them. They're impressing Americans, and so Adam is like, we're stopping this right now. So it wasn't the idea of necessarily silencing American voices as it was silencing the French people in America. So, but the reason I say this is that's what Wilson did with Germans, and you saw where that was. Right, but for Adams, I think some of his motivation was very good. Yeah. But the way it played out became very, very bad in some Holy areas. fuck! Uh, and and we, we kind of dive through this in the book, give me context, and it's not to justify him, but you see uh -huh. where he's coming from. And it's a little bit like when FDR, on, and this is not quite the same, but FDR is in terms of the Japanese, and we're like, no, no, no. Ever, but I understand, if you're an FDR position, you're like, what options do we have? We know there's Japanese spies here, we don't know who they are, we don't know where they're the guy you sent out to find <laughs> yeah, if, there were, if there was a widespread <laughs> oh, okay. that was it. No. Mm -hmm. And then it was ordered to start them and immediately quit. I mean, he built them there. Yeah. And then immediately like quit, so I don't want anything to do with this, right? Yeah. So, but that's where, that's where Adam was really good on the broad things. He, he really got the broad things. Right? When it came to putting them in the broad things, he, he messed up pretty often. I think that's the way I would be as president. I, I'm pretty good in the broad things, but I would be horrible as a president. I would be horrible as a president. You know, you can, you have, everybody has their own skill. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, to recognize it, which I think you were saying that Adams did. Adams, Adams, was, right. well, Adams is kind of an indispensable man. He, you know, we call Washington yeah. that. But without Adams, you don't get the results that we have in the revolution. Because he had to put the right people. You know, look at how we there. look at uh, it's still hot. Elon Musk now. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying politically. I, I'm still, uh, I don't have any idea where he is. Um, however, it was those kinds of brains. Mm -hmm. That, that there were multiple versions mm -hmm. of an Elon Musk back then. This never happened before. Uh, hopefully it would happen again, but we'll see. Okay, maybe we're too far in the weeds. I mean, it's a geek fest. Uh, I want to tell you about two books that you must have, and you have to have. I tell you what, I don't see no fucking garnets, bro. Look at what's in there. I don't see no fucking garnets. The, no fucking garnets. the American Story, the beginning, uh, written by David and Tim Barton. Uh, it... It oh, takes you from uh, you know, Columbus, the Pilgrims, uh, all the way just before the founding. Let's, uh, then we have the building of the Republic. It's the American story. These are uh, books that help everyone should own oh, I get stuck. because this is being erased in real time. Please, they do all of their research on original documents. Uh, and from the people of the time, they're not going in and going, well, you know, I believe what he was really saying. You take it from them and take it from the people that actually witnessed things. Um, so let me ask you a couple of things. I have looked for 
So I probably ruined my crucible. The little result we got. <laughs> it almost looks like a face kind of in the front. Crazy. I don't see any of the garnets though, man. It's fucking weird. And when you look down in the crucible, there's little bits of glass that broke off of that. I got down in there, but yeah, it's fucking probably ruined. But we'll see what the results turn up.